In this video, let's look at the European Union's recently agreed Regulation on Markets and Crypto Assets, which is the first effort to impose standards throughout the Euro area rather than a patchwork of national rules. I'm Corey, and on this channel, I help you decode technology and innovation to grow your wealth on the journey to financial independence. In this video, I wanna break down what I think will become a pivotal piece of regulation for any digital asset business operating in Europe, and that is the recently agreed Regulation on Markets and Crypto Assets, or MICA for short. In this video, I'll give you a brief summary of the regulation, but be on the lookout for a deep dive. Let's look at how we got here. For anyone watching that is not based in Europe, let me give you a very high-level overview of how the European area is governed as context for why this MICA CA regulation matters. As a general matter, the European Union, which is sometimes referred to as the broader European economic area, when referring to nations like Switzerland, is a group of European nations that share a common currency but do not share the same government, economic characteristics, political systems, nor central banks. This creates a very unique situation where there is a currency union but not a full economic or political union. I won't get into all the details here, but one relevant impact for this video is that since the launch of Bitcoin, you've had different nations that are EU members take a very different approach to crypto regulation and licensing in general. Different national approaches to crypto meant that some nations were historically seen as much more friendly to crypto than others, but in the broader context of European politics, those nations were basically forced to backtrack by more powerful nations in the European Union. For example, Malta was the blockchain island and Estonia was also a very crypto friendly nation and each nation to some extent was forced by more powerful nations in Europe to change or modify their positions on crypto. Under these new rules, crypto businesses will need to be licensed in at least one member nation in order to qualify for a passport scheme that will allow an entity regulated in one EU member nation to participate in another EU member nation subject to the details of course. These new rules meant that licensed businesses will have increased numbers of consumer protection compliance requirements and will be liable to consumers in the event that they lose investors funds. Generally some of these guardrails will be good for the industry in my opinion. However what we should be on the lookout for is a piling on of compliance costs and taxes that make it impossible or unprofitable for all but the largest crypto businesses to operate in Europe. Historically, this has been the trend from European regulators that have tended to take a different regulatory approach when compared to regulators in the US or across Asia. Only time will tell how this ultimately plays out, so stay tuned. So what is the practical impact of MICA regulations? As a practical matter, I expect that you will see the same playbook apply to technology companies and banks will also apply to crypto businesses. Let's see how it plays out in terms of innovation and economic growth. For example, if you're a circle that has just launched the euro coin which i've recently released a video on how might these rules impact that business these new eu rules will mean that circle must have a physical presence in an eu member nation and have a local company there they will have of course cash requirements as a token issuer and that will be set by the local regulator in the specific country that they're based in and they may even be required to hire a certain number of people locally in addition circle will also need to follow rules set by the european banking authority okay so what's my take on this. Well, I think the fact that the EU will introduce a European-wide set of regulation on the crypto industry is in theory a good thing. I think some regulations are needed and it will help weed out bad actors in the industry that have come to light in the recent months that I've also made videos on. Link in the show notes below. However, I will reserve judgment on these regulations until they're fully implemented so that we can measure the outcome. And I want to emphasize the outcome. And this is where I remain skeptical. Europe has historically been great as a block at creating regulations in many sectors that protect consumers and impose compliance costs. From my perspective, EU regulators oftentimes lose sight of what I consider to be the ultimate goal, and that is economic growth and prosperity for the people of various member nations. For example, if you have pages of regulation that protect consumers, but you do not create any jobs or economic growth or new businesses that can generate economic activity 
to improve the lives of the people, then I would consider the regulation to be a failure when it is all said and done. And in this way, you can think about poorly implemented regulations as just another form of taxes. And these taxes impose increased compliance costs on businesses, but they do generate tax revenue for nations. However, they do not bring prosperity for the people. Join me on the path to decoding technology and innovation to grow your wealth on the journey to financial independence. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe, and hit that notification bell. Until next time.